now recording. The following podcast may have adult humor. Swear words. Innuendos of a adult nature. Making fun of me. That's a given. Everybody looks <laughs> forward to that. But just know that you have been warned. Hey, this is Richard. And I'm Jesse. I can't see. Neither can I. But we are very critical of all kinds of stuff, so be sure to check out... The Unseen Critics. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Knights of the Braille Podcast. I'm Jesse, and with me, as always, is Richard. Hello, governor. Uh, did you wake up British today? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I might. Australian? Uh, okay, whatever. Did you get hit in the head? <laughs> uh, yeah, a long time ago. I'm still uh, having the after effects. Oh, wow, it must be a nasty one. And it was pretty bad. It was. Let's see, um, well, I fell off a tractor a couple of times. Um, not to mention the airbag with the wreck. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, quite a few. So, what do you have for us to read? Today, I have Ghost Written by Ronald Malfi. It is a collection of, I think, four, three or four, I think, four. Four kind of, like, interconnected stories, and they're all about first manuscripts, be it, like, manuscripts that can bring about the end of the world or bring about creatures from different dimensions. And... It's very interesting. I really enjoyed it. Every story is a little different. Like the one story is these two brothers have to deliver this cursed manuscript. Well, they don't know it's a manuscript, but they have to deliver this package to some other people and all this shit goes down. Uh, one is about an author who starts to go crazy during the book he's writing. And very good stories. Very interesting. Um, very good like character development. I'd say they're kind of like quiet horror more than they're like um, blood and guts. I mean, there's some of that, but it's more about like the, the feeling that the story sets. So yeah. this is definitely, I'd say this is four stars. I really enjoyed it. And all hmm. the stories are good. They all have like little Easter eggs to show that they're in the same universe. Right. I like that. I like that. Um, when I'm, gonna talk about is uh it's called dragon wars and it's an as it oh, describes yeah. it an epic sword and sorcery fantasy series uh it's at 20 books right now i mean there's some holy fuck yeah but uh, they're fairly quick reads or so this one is i mean for me for you it'd yeah. probably take you six seven eight years well, um, if it was Kindle, it wouldn't. <laughs> I do believe they own Kindle. Um, yeah, they are. Let's see. They were 99 cents last I saw that you sent me the first. It wasn't. Um, Did you ever I mean, notice, though, that like these independent writers, there's a shit ton of books in their series and they come out really, very quick? Yeah. I know there's one, L. Gray, that she writes like, I don't know, stuff like uh, that I wouldn't read, you know, and Mama really likes them, and I think she comes out with a new book like every three hours or something like that. <laughs> it's like every time I turn around, I'm getting a notification. Are they like romance new... books or? Uh, somewhat, I guess. I don't know. Mama liked her in the beginning, so I subscribed to her, like, to buy her, like, Christmas presents from her books and you know, things like that, and then Mama finally was like, I'm tired of her, it's all the same. You know, it's like she got that chat GPT bot or something and is yeah. writing all these books. But um, anyway, Dragon Wars, um, this they had the collections on Audible for one credit, uh, books one through five. I know six through ten is out there, but um, Craig Halloran is the one who wrote these books, and like I said, they... Uh, they're really quick reads, at least for me. Uh, Lee Allen, I think his last name, is a narrator. I've and... actually never heard that name. 
Um, to be honest, I really didn't like him or the story to begin with. But then, I mean, I, I just kept reading, really because mm -hmm. I didn't know what else I wanted to read and didn't want to watch anything. And like before I knew it, it's like, oh, I am invested in the story. You know, Sometimes it's like, I feel like an interesting story can suffer from a not so great narrator. Yeah, and and he has grown on me a lot. Um, I mean, he's not like anywhere near my favorite, you know, but he he's grown on me quite a bit. So I would definitely suggest to uh, you know check him out, check it out on Kindle because um, the narrator is probably not for everybody, but definitely worth reading. Knowing me and how I am, I'd probably check him out on Kindle. Yeah, and then That's probably like not read book. it I either. Think I I think I recommended it on here, the the Ruin series. It was like the Sword of Ruin, the Magic of Ruin. You got like all 12 books, and I don't think the series is done yet for like 99 cents. But right. they're actually really well written. And okay. you've read them all? No, hell no. I didn't figure. So that's what was going to surprise me, you know. I've read one. <laughs> one. My thing is I have trouble <laughs> finishing like a series if I have it because I... There's so many other things, like, I want to get to this, I want to get, so I'll come back to it. Yeah, I think uh, doctors call that um, ADHD, or ADD. Well, why would you stick, <laughs> well, you stick with, like, one series? I do, yeah, until I finish it, you know, or, like, finish what they have available. Yeah. That's just me. I mean, I get, I like, burnt out, though, like, sometimes, like, I need to take. I do sometimes, but, you know. Yeah. That's just where you're weird. It's okay. Uh, got us a V word for today. Have okay. you ever heard of Vanshin magic? No. I hadn't either. Uh, really interesting though. It's, have you ever heard of the Dying Earth novels? I've heard of them. I've never read them, obviously. See, I hadn't heard of them until, or at least yeah, I don't man, remember. Right? Is that yeah. Yeah, Jack Vance, he's the one that came up with this um, Vanshin Magic. And I had never heard of them, or at least I had forgotten them if I have heard of them. But the system is that the magic user must study for his allotment of spells for the day. But after they use it, say they study to learn Magic Missile. Um, magic Mitchell. Yeah, Magic Mitchell too. But after they use it, once they can't use it again because they forgot it. That's so, I mean, interesting. It is very interesting. I thought, huh, I like that. It adds an element like, do I want to waste my magic missile right now? Do right. I want to, you know, save it? Mm -hmm. you know, it right. really brings you into thinking about, like, ooh, what do I want to do here? And then you're like, shit, I used it 10 minutes ago. I should have waited till now. Yeah. I honestly think this um, system would really be something like Stephen would like in you know the world and all that he's creating. Yeah, I, I think he would like that. I think it would play off well. It would make you think how to play differently. I'm sure. Well, I'm not sure, but I assume most of those are probably on Bard because I think they're older books. Could be. I'd have to look and see. I think. Uh, but very interesting. And. Today, our letter is V. Right? No, Jesse. You know this is a kid-friendly show. Oh, it is. Sorry. Well, that's why I have you on here. I want you. I want the audience level to match yours. Oh. <laughs> Take a minute. Got him. Vampire spawn. That, I would assume, is someone who was turned by another vampire and, like, became their underling? Mm, partially correct. They are, according to the lore, at least in what I've read here, is they're not a fully turned vampire. They're like a... I guess we're a good term to be like a half vampire. And you have actually fought one of these. You probably don't remember it, but it was in the Curse of Strahd. I do kind of remember it. 
Cause y'all, I'm trying to remember what y'all did to Wasn't it. Wasn't like like that one of our big first big yeah. fights? Yeah, tied up or something. Like we really worked together on it. Yeah, y'all did really well on it actually. Um, but uh, anyway, it was in the curse I feel of like Sean. That was the first thing that like brought us together as a group, like where we really worked together. Probably was. Um, but I remember it, it was it was quite the battle. They have an armor class of of 15. And they have an average of 82 hit points. And while that doesn't seem like a lot for a challenge rating 5, you know, but as long as... It's hard to hit, though, kind of, depending on what your rating is. But here's the thing. They have resistance to all attacks except magical attacks. So if you hit them for 20 points of damage... Yeah, it's only 10. Yeah. And not only that, as long as they have one health point left, at the beginning of their turn, they get 10 points back. Did you notice, like, whenever we talk about numbers or whatever, excuse me, it's like we always get in a situation where we can say a 10, a 10. Yeah. Well, because that's just an awesome movie. I mean... Yes. Um, But, of course, you know, the typical lore of, like, radiant damage or holy water damage will prevent the regeneration from actually taking place. Um, And this is, I don't remember if I used this whenever I was uh, running that encounter for y'all, but a a vampire spawn can basically act like a spider, you know, except for shooting webs out the booty hole. Mm Mm-hmm. But they can climb walls and climb upside down on ceilings. I mean, it's so many different advantageous positions. That was a no, big word just, for you. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, but they do get a multi-attack. They get two attacks, but only one of which can be a bite. They get a plus six to attack with their claws, um, which averages out to about eight points of uh, slashing damage. Um, per attack. Their bite gets a plus six as well, and it can either be a willing or a grappled opponent. Do you ever feel like in these that, like, the attacks, I feel like sometimes, and you can make it this way, of course, but everything shouldn't be a plus six. Like, one of them should be stronger than the other. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they are. Um, I mean, I've come across some that are, you know, uh, yeah. But, um, anyway, the bite will get an average of six piercing damage. But also, you get an average of seven necrotic damage, and whatever, say you take seven points of the necrotic damage, mm-hmm. you lose seven maximum hit points until you take a long rest. But the vampire spawn regains the seven health points, or hit points oh, that shit. you lost. Tricky bastard. Yes, so that is, you know, what can keep a battle going on, like, for a while. You know, really, really, really interesting, though. Um, it can be a lot of fun to play with, because, I mean, I love vampire stuff. Right. Uh, you got anything that we need to talk about on this episode, my dude? No, not really. I just... Living the life. Glad to be back home. No one will notice a difference listening to it, but for the last few months, I was at my parents' house recording. Yeah. But I was on my phone and everything, so nothing was different. The tie kicked him out and said, see you later. Bye. No, I had to have surgery. We need more (laughs) adventures of uh, Ty and Josiah. Yeah, eventually. Eventually. But uh, I feel a little tingly. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Like, oh, James. <laughs> um, it always feels that way. I mean, this is true. This is very, very I'm true. I'm surprised he's not numb yet. Uh, this is Mitch, though. I mean, Mitch yeah. is just different. But um, we're, we're talking about doing this, like, in, in future episodes where we take over, like, a character and our characters do the podcast. We enter into... You know, like, not necessarily a one-shot, but like a, 
I'm trying to think of the word campaign setting. Yeah, kind of like a camp, like mini adventure and, campaigns. Yeah, and we'll just uh, you know like walk through the adventure. Um, we think it'll be something that's really interesting. Uh, at least I and do. Mainly it'll well, I shouldn't say mainly, but it'll entertain us. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, look forward to that in the upcoming weeks. Um, maybe next week. I have to see how this week actually goes, but uh, we um I did meet. Saturday evening with uh, the D and D people in person. Unfortunately, not many showed up. We had two new people, and um, you know we've discussed and we're going to be moving it to like Friday evenings and going to be running one shots until we you know see how many people's actually dedicated yeah. to it and you know and may just stick with one shots. You know something you can finish in a. In a setting or in an I evening. Would, and, I feel like it might be easier for you to set up. I think it will. Um, kind of do like a Monster Hunter thing. Yeah. You know. Uh, but anyway, that's the plans going forward. Um, really not a whole lot else going on. Uh, be sure to check out the Knights of Braille blog. Uh, be sure to check out Unseen Critics, which is the... Like, just our podcast for Jesse and me. Right. Well, Jesse's podcast. No, um, it's where our we, podcast. Where we discuss like all kinds of things and, and criticize it. Mostly movies, it seems, but, you know, other stuff well. And there may be some uh, blind stuff in there. Yeah. Whatever comes up, but we always make sure we do a movie. Exactly. Uh, but I guess, that, I guess that's really it, Jesse. Um, close us out, my dude. You can email us at knights of the braille gmail.com. You can go to knights of the braille.com and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. You know what's cool? Podcasts. You know what's not cool? No podcasts. Check out all the podcasts over here at blindknowledge.com. This podcast you're listening to right now is a featured blind knowledge podcast. The Adventures of Finn and Greenbottle. Ooh, I'm famous. Ooh, it really sinks in here. I mean, I'm, it's like someone took a jump in the water. I mean, that bucket's for drinking. Ooh, maybe it's... It actually did. There's like something... In the bottom of the bucket. And I've been drinking out of this. What is that? That'd be a, uh, a tag, mate. Uh, a, you say you've been drinking out of that? Yes, I have, Mr. Stranger with no name. Don't you know that Stranger Danger? Oh, that I do, but, uh... I well, just don't want you to get, you know, sick and puke all over the place. Finn and Greenbottle's constitution matches that of a dwarf. No, you didn't hear that, did you? Oh yeah, mate. We heard your tonic rumbling there. And we got a feeling that, uh... Them uh, leather pants that you got on there is going to be chafing a wee bit. You rolled a seven. Constitution check failed. Oh, but where do I get a drink at then? Pretty much anywhere but that bucket. Um, could you please, um, uh, hurry up and turn the other way? I am, um, uh... Oh, it's okay, mate. We all know. We've all seen each other do it. Oh, oh but I'm... Oh, i oh. oh, I've got to get out of here. Oh, I am feeling green bottle. Oh, Master Rogue. Sort of... Oh, no. Oh, no. Pick these locks. Why won't they open? 
Oh, oh this is really making me mad. Dexterity sleight of hand for lock, picking check failed. You rolled a nine. Constitution save is a critical fail. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by the Knights of the Braille and is made possible through the support of viewers such as you. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to get all of the latest information and episodes. Thank you.